Well, hey there, it's a payroll video and it's a video about specific withholdings in payroll. So if you search and you're looking for information about HSA or health savings account deductions, both employer or employee deferrals that go to these health savings accounts, this is a video for you. It's gonna show you how it's handled in payroll and if you're using the payroll and Excel program, the payroll SPRAP that I have for you, I'm now adding this into the file so that we can operate anyone with an HSA account, any, any way that we do it. So let's just talk about a couple things that you need to know about this money and what's going on here. So basically, the government has some things that will help you get some money, essentially tax-free or non-taxable money that you can use for health-related issues up to a certain amount every year. Uh, this year, it depends on whether it's a single plan or a family plan. And it's, uh, I put the formulas in here so that it will color up when you end up withholding too much, basically, and going over the allotted amount. The allotted amount is $3,850 if you're on a single plan or $7,750 if you're on a family plan. And so what you do here is you have two different options of where you can pull this money from. So either you're working for an employer and the employer is a good employer that is contributing to this plan on your behalf without actually taking it out of your compensation. So sometimes the employer will put that money directly in as like a benefit or a perk as of being an employee. They'll offer, offer that to you. So that's really basically free money to use on health completely. It's not only is it not taxed, but it's not even recorded as income. So the employer can do that. It goes on your on your W-2 is where you're going to see it down here in box 12 with the code W. It'll be your employer and employee HSA contributions. But there are two different types. There's that employer one, which goes right here. Notice the word employer right here. So it's important to see. Those employer amounts go right here. You know, however many they're going to be for the pay period. You just type it in. Then there's the option of the employee. And this one is, I think, more common where you're going to divert some of your income to go directly into the health savings account so that you don't get taxed at all on this money, all right? That's what that does. So if the employee is diverting their own wages toward it, so it's essentially coming out of their gross compensation and their gross compensation is not gonna include this number anymore because it's not gonna show up on line one of the W-2, your wages, tips, and compensation actually won't be there because it's being diverted beforehand and it's going into the health savings account, which can't go over a certain amount. So let's talk about that. You'll see what happens. Let's put, there we go. All of a sudden things are popping up in yellow or even potentially in, in red, okay? Oh, not even, let's go a little bit more, 850. Uh, so stop if true. I'm going to change the order of the formula so you can see it's going to go either red or yellow. We're going to put this one. We're going to move this rule up. And yeah, so you can see it goes either yellow or red. So it doesn't know whether or not the employee is on a single or a family plan. That's why I made it go either yellow or red. It's just letting you know that you've reached an amount of HSA contribution for the year, both the employer and the employee portion have started to total either above 3850 or above 7750. And so this is one that you just have to keep an eye on in your file. It's not going to stop you from typing in the amount that you're trying to desert, to divert to the HSA because it doesn't want to limit you in that sense. But it but you need to know that you, if you over uh, over withhold to this HSA that you really can't do that. And that money is going to become taxable and you're going to have to put that into back into taxable compensation once you go over those thresholds that we mentioned, depending on the employee. But that's basically where you put it and how you do it. And it shows up on the pay stub now um, in these spots, which is employee self uh, health savings contribution right there. So when you change pay periods, you see how much they diverted for the pay period and how much they've diverted for the year. And also down here, it also applies the employer person, which is really that free money completely that isn't coming out of the gross compensation of the employee at all. This is just a direct contribution from the employer, basically in addition to their regular compensation. 
So this is obviously not taxed as well. And this is showing the employer contributions for the HSA down here. And if all filters, like I said, onto the W-2, both of them filter right here in 12W on the W-2. As you can see, this would be too much. This would be definitely too much because it's 8,550. So that would not be allowed. And, you know, I almost want to make the formula there pop up in red to show you you need to do something because you don't want to over withhold. All right. But that's where to put them. They've been added to the payroll file. I have a bunch of other withholding con and contribution items that, that you can take advantage of in this file. They're matrixed out like this. Like this is basically how it appears in the publication 15 of the circular E is it shows you the type of withholding or contribution and whether or not it's taxable on the federal level or when it comes to social security and Medicare, whether it's taxable there and whether it's taxable to the state. So those HSA uh, contributions, health savings are, they're not subject to any of those. So they're essentially completely exempt. They're just like this one. This would be HSAs, you know, both employer and employee contributions. And they're completely exempt. So you can follow this logic and that's how if you're programming this yourself, you can see that this is identifying whether or not something is taxable or not. Like the AFLAC stuff is taxable. Uh, AFLAC and casualty stuff that, that's not related to employee health or employee dental and stuff like that. But this is generally about HSAs because it's important to know the maximums for 2023. And it's good to take advantage of them. Now, you can lose out on that money sometimes. Um, sometimes it'll carry over, sometimes it won't. So it's one of those where a lot of times employees will let you know the pay period you're working, kind of how much they want to start diverting to it because they know they're going to have expenses if it's not a fixed amount. And this allows you to do that right here in the payroll file, right under the employee health savings contribution column. All right. So that's the HSA update for payroll in Excel 2023 and the payroll scrap. Enjoy it. Payroll should be easy. We're, make, we're doing the best we can. But yeah, payroll should be easy. So we're going to make it sell. So.